नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा योर वॉचिंग परस्पेक्टिव प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी एंड जर्मन चांसलर ओलाफ शॉल्स हेल्ड द सेवंथ इंटर गवर्नमेंटल कंसल्टेशंस इन न्यू दिल्ली ऑन फ्राइडे बोथ लीडर्स कॉम्प्रिहेंसिवली रिव्यूड द प्रोग्रेस मेड इन इंडिया जर्मनी स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप इन द एरियाज ऑफ डिफेंस सिक्योरिटी टेक्नोलॉजी एंड इनोवेशन एनर्जी ग्रीन एंड सस्टेनेबल डिवेलपमेंट further to expand and elevate relations between both countries new initiatives in areas of artificial intelligence semiconductors and clean energy were taken the prime minister also welcomed germany's focus on india strategy and the progress made between the two nations in the areas of education skilling and mobility the two leaders also addressed the inaugural session of the 18th asia pacific conference of german business apk 2024 which saw the participation from around 650 top ceos and business leaders from india germany and other countries earlier in the day the prime minister hosted the german chancellor at his residence and during their talks they agreed to maintain the renewed momentum in india germany ties they also discussed key global issues of interest and also discussed further avenues for cooperation the prime minister mentioned that the strategic partnership between india and germany is entering its 25th year and both countries are celebrating 50 years of science and technology collaboration this year india and germany have had a strategic partnership since the year 2000 and over the years this partnership has deepened and diversified across various sectors so how will this visit of the german chancellor to india pave the way for further strengthening of our bilateral ties what are the future avenues of cooperation between both countries all this and much more in perspective today I'm pleased to welcome former ambassador Gurjeet Singh on this edition of the perspective. Ambassador, welcome to the program. I'm also pleased to welcome Professor Harsh Vipant, Vice President Studies and Foreign Policy ORF. Professor, delighted to have you with us on this broadcast as well. But before we begin a conversation with our guest, uh, let's hear what the Prime Minister had to say at the joint presser that he held at the uh, Hyderabad House with the German Chancellor. Listen. Chancellor Sot ke netrutv mein hamari bhagidari ko एक नया मोमेंटम और डायरेक्शन मिला है जर्मनी की फोकस ऑन इंडिया स्ट्रेटेजी के लिए मैं चांसलर सोच का अभिनंदन करता हूं इसमें विश्व के दो बड़े लोकतंत्रों के बीच पार्टनरशिप को कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव तरीके से मॉडर्नाइज और एलिवेट करने का ब्लूप्रिंट है आज हमारे इनोवेशन एंड टेक्नोलॉजी रोडमैप लॉन्च किया गया है क्रिटिकल एंड इमर्जिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज स्किल डेवलपमेंट और इनोवेशन में होल ऑफ गवर्नमेंट अप्रोच पर भी सहमति बनी है इससे आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस सेमीकंडक्टर और क्लीन एनर्जी जैसे क्षेत्रों में सहयोग को बल मिलेगा रक्षा और सुरक्षा क्षेत्रों में बढ़ता सहयोग हमारे गहरे आपसी विश्वास का प्रतीक है क्लासिफाइड इंफॉर्मेशन के एक्सचेंज पर बनी सहमति इस दिशा में एक नया कदम है आज संपन्न की गई म्यूचुअल लीगल असिस्टेंस ट्रीटी से आतंकवाद और अलगाववादी तत्वों से निपटने में हमारे साझा प्रयास सशक्त होंगे ग्रीन एंड सस्टेनेबल ग्रोथ के साझा कमिटमेंट पर दोनों देश निरंतर कार्यरत है आज हमारी ग्रीन और सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट पार्टनरशिप को आगे बढ़ाते हुए हमने ग्रीन अर्बन मोबिलिटी पार्टनरशिप के दूसरे चरण पर सहमति बनाई है so we'll discuss all of these aspects with the two eminent guests who are joining us on the program ambassador coming to you first for your opening remarks on the significance of this visit of the german chancellor to india we've seen he's had a hectic day he along with the prime minister uh, they held the igc they attended the ceos forum uh, they also addressed the 18th asia pacific conference of german business and earlier in the day they had a bilateral meeting at the prime minister's residence how consequential do you think all of this will be in adding momentum to the india germany partnership thank you tina for having me uh, earlier today i was fortunate to be at the lunch hosted by pm for the chancellor and you know the body language between them and the easy calm and happiness that they were manifesting indicated that everything had gone well so what has gone well 
first in the midst of various crises that India and Germany find their attention drawn to. India and Germany yet find adequate time to build an independent partnership, particularly during the period of Chancellor Scholz, who has taken to Prime Minister Modi in a very warm way. I think they have met five times, and this is the third visit over two years of Chancellor Scholz. Right. So what I see broadly is that India and Germany are injecting strategic autonomy in their engagement with each other, knowing full well how each other reacts to China, Russia, and the US, and yet finding a path for them to work together in multifarious ways. It is like reading a court document with so many diverse things. And today, when you hear the number of agreements, uh, announcements, which have come across, I think it is quite mind boggling how India and Germany are proceeding together in a very strategic way. Professor, your thoughts on uh, the, the key outcomes that we can expect. There are lots of uh, uh, aspects uh, which attach significance. One of them that the ambassador mentioned that this is uh, the German Chancellor's third visit to India in just two years. The second also being that just ahead of this visit, uh, Germany released a crucial document, a focus on India document, which is quite rare. Uh, it is, Tina. It is quite. Uh, I think uh, there, there's something. Uh, something is changing in German uh, German foreign policy. It's a strategic worldview, uh, and uh, certainly uh, uh, India finds itself at the heart of that conversation, which is which is a welcome development. For long, uh, German India relationship had been underwhelming strategically. It had been a robust economic relationship, uh, and Germany's foreign policy had largely been about uh, trade and commerce. Uh, and therefore, the focus uh, on the uh, in Asia was largely on China. But I think suddenly, after Ukraine, after the COVID crisis, uh, there is a sense in Germany that they need to look at a lot of things. Need, they need a reappraisal of their foreign policy in terms of how over dependent it, it had become. For example, on Russia for energy, uh, on China for uh, for trade and commerce. And I think that uh, has shaken up uh, German. A foreign policy worldview, Germany today wants to be a strategic player, not simply an economic player. And I think that's what has injected this strategic uh, momentum in India-German relationship. We have had a good relationship. Uh, there, there have been no big uh, fault lines there, but it was also a, a, an underperforming relationship. But with Germany reorienting itself towards the Indo-Pacific, uh, we, we see Germany now, uh, German and Indian forces doing military exercises, uh, quite quite extraordinary uh, development. Uh, we see in, in Germany and India talking about the sale of defense technology again, uh, which which requires Germany to change domestic laws. And I think therefore that focus on India, this idea that India will have to be seen as a very important partner for Germany over the next decade. This is the realization that perhaps the center of gravity of global politics and economics as it shifts to the Indo-Pacific, a partnership with India is is going to be. Uh, pivotal in shaping German's approach to the world and to the Indo-Pacific. And therefore, this, this ambition in German-India relationship that has come through and that gets uh, reflected, for example, during this visit of Chancellor Scholz, uh, it's quite extraordinary. And I think that is why there is so much talk, there is so much buzz around this relationship today because of that added strategic momentum, strategic concept in the relationship. And, and all of the things, uh, all of these uh, agreements that Ambassador Singh was talking about, an extraordinary array of agreements that we are talking about, a partnership that goes, again, the, the ambition is to build it from a people-to-people -people level all the way to strategic level. So the ambition that has come into this relationship is very welcome, and that was that was what was reflected uh, in this visit, and hopefully it will continue to shape the trajectory of this relationship. Sure, we'll discuss more about the defense aspect and, and the other avenues of cooperation as well. But Ambassador, your thoughts on the fact that India and Germany have had a strategic partnership since the year 2000. But over the years, although it has evolved in many ways, we've seen a lot of the intent not translating into outcomes. And the reason has been that on a lot of issues, we've had divergent views, the most recent one, one being on the Russia-Ukraine war. What explains or what, what is your assessment on this break of tradition 
towards uh, India now being on the spotlight for Germany? You're right. 25 years of a strategic partnership without much strategic content. So I think you have to give credit to Chancellor Scholz that when Prime Minister Modi went in 22, in the midst of the Ukraine crisis, he turned up with this sustainable partnership with an additional new financing of 10 billion euros. <clears throat> with no European country, do we have this quantum of flow of funds of this nature. So he changed the nature of strategic partnership into a green one. So far, we had the Indo-German energy partnership, environment partnership, education part. Now all these came under the sustainability part. And now you mentioned about the India paper, the India strategy paper. That actually brings everything into one set of documents. The challenge will be how to implement it. But I think, as Professor Pant said, the ambition is there and the intent is there. And this comes because German economy today is not the German economy of 25 years ago. It is today an economy in need of markets. It is uh, dependent very largely uh, on China for the profits of its private sector. So it needs to diversify. It needs to find new markets, new partners, new places to sell its technology and invest in. And that is where India, with its rapid growth, its democratic credentials, and all new schemes like Make in India for the World, all these are drawing attention of the Germans. And I think that is where the German government has taken the lead to reach out to India. And now we are hoping that German civil society, German academia, German companies will all follow that lead and also look at India as an important option for their operations. Professor, our bilateral trade has surpassed $30 billion. If you could explain to us some of uh, the future avenues of cooperation that both leaders mentioned during the joint press conference today. Well, I think, uh, you know, certainly uh, the, uh, there are a number of areas which are being talked about. Uh, of course, uh, as Ambassador Singh pointed out, uh, sustainability, sustainable development partnership, green partnership uh, is very important uh, now for, for India-German relationship because uh, Germany has technology that India needs, and that that, that technological uh, impetus to this to this partnership that is coming uh, is going to shape our own trajectory of, of making this uh, this green transition. And I think uh, a lot of focus, therefore, has been uh, over the last and under under Chancellor Scholz on how to make uh, this partnership in real sense green, and how to make that the pivot around which to revolve uh, a larger relationship. The other aspect which I think has been quite uh, uh, interesting to to look at has been the mobility uh, agreement that that you know that that India and Germany have, have signed. There is a demographic dividend here in this country, large talent pool. Germany uh -huh. needs that talent pool, and I think that in, in that sense, that partnership is very organic. Uh, it it uh, it sort of not only allows uh, for this transfer of talent from one country to another, but also allows building of bridges between the two nations, which have been missing. And I think we have seen, for example, in the last few years. A number of students increasing in Germany. I mean, Indian students going to Germany. That number has expanded because Germany has also realized that there is a there is there is a potential here, and they have been expanding the kinds of courses their universities are offering uh, to Indian students and, and and to international students more broadly. So there has been that shift in Germany, and I think that India and Indians uh, Indian students have taken full advantage of that. So you see that uh, that is, uh, you know engagement between. Uh, societies have, have increased, societal level interactions have increased, and I think uh, that has been a very important element of this of this engagement. And certainly, the you know from when you talk of technology, uh, critical and emerging technologies, where a lot of focus of India's emerging partnerships is, there is also where India is focusing on when it comes to Germany. And 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 I think one of the big advantages of uh, driving a strong partnership through Germany is that uh, you know. Uh, Germany can mobilize entire Europe in, in EU in ways that uh, other countries can't. It is it still remains the 
a driver of uh, European Union's uh, economic engine. And in that sense, having a partnership with Germany allows that expansive European Union engagement that perhaps India has had in mind. And where, for example, Germany's relatively lackluster approach had been a, had been a problem. We saw a lot of talk about FTA in the last, uh, you know, Ch Chancellor talked about FTA in his, in his remarks. And I think that, of course, has been going on now for a while. But the reason why there is a greater degree of optimism today is because of the strategic content that has entered into the relationship. And today, when you are looking at trading agreements, free trade agreements through a strategic lens, I think that becomes a very important part of that. So when, when Prime Minister in the morning was talking about trust-based partnerships, whether it is economic partnership, trade partnership, or even supply chain partnership, I think there you do see how India and Germany can work together, as was mentioned earlier, that in, in, this, in this world where so much is in flux, India and Germany together have a worldview about this world uh, based on principles that they converge. And I think that is very important in today's world where they can inject that sense of strategic autonomy into their decision making, as Ambassador Singh was pointing out, with regard to broader questions. And that allows for newer possibilities and specific domains to emerge as well. Sure, we'll come back on the FTA point, but uh, Ambassador, uh, uh, Professor spoke about uh, human engagement, and in that regard, Germany has decided to increase the number of visas for skilled Indians uh, from 20,000 to about 90,000. Give us a sense of where this uh, skilled human talent is going to be utilized by Germany. I was ambassador, the number of Indian students in Germany was 5,000. Now it is close to 50,000 and increasing. Since the pandemic, when the numbers of Indian students getting admission in German universities grew rapidly, the visa giving ability did not grow. As a result, there was immense frustration that there was a desire to go. Universities were admitting Indian students, but German consulates and embassies were unable to cope with the visa. So this led to contradictions. Now, when you hear of this announcement, that we will give 90,000 visas. This is basically to counter that narrative that we will build a people-to-people -people relationship and we will have institutional arrangement to service it. So I think that is very important. Also, this uh, migration pact. Now, this basically means that Indian students who go there could also find employment because Germany needs talent. And I think Professor Pant has brought this up. So one of the papers that they have released is on India strategy, but there's also a paper they have released on skills which in, in India. So I think those are in great demand. But you know, I strike a note of caution here. German polity and society are undergoing change. The recent results of elections in the states of East Germany show a rising anti-immigrant immigrant trend. Now, we need to be cautious that so far, this trend has not hit Indians. But there is always this danger that a anti-immigrant trend could engulf all immigrants, including Indians. Just a word of caution. But I want to build on something Professor said about the FTA. You know, Germany speaks a lot about the FTA, but I don't think they invest enough weight in Brussels to get it done. They are not saying, oh, what can we do? It is the EU. But if you are a heavyweight in the EU, then you must carry your weight. If you are my biggest partner in the economic sense in EU, please carry your weight. That I don't see happening. On the other side, a $30 billion trade without an FTA. Also sounds good, though. No? Why do you need an FTA? So, I mean, we need to look at these carefully. But I think there are three issues, Tina, which prevent a breakout on the economic side. First, German companies do not come up and make collective announcements of investment. You know, a Japanese would announce, oh, we are going to have $4 billion of investment in the next five years. This doesn't happen from you. Second, while Japanese companies often use the ODA route to build their business, German companies, even when implementing German ODA, do not convert it to business. And third, they are very reluctant to have joint ventures. 
they prefer to go it alone. And that very often does not help. We need more German manufacturing investment to create jobs in India. And that is where joint ventures will greatly help. So, Ambassador, this time uh, the German Chancellor has is being accompanied by a large business delegation. The Prime Minister, in fact, while speaking to them, told them that this is the right time, this is the correct moment to be part of India's growth story. Would you expect uh, a, a turnaround or a, a change in the norm in which the German businesses function? So, you know, the German business is the most pro-China element of German society. Their entire profits come from there, and they are very scared of losing them. So their diversification is slow. As I said, they are not making big commitments to invest in India. What they are doing is listening to the new opportunity. And I think that the Prime Minister, the Commerce Minister, the Indian businessmen who were there have all said so. I had occasion to meet some of the participants from the German side at lunch today. And they all said, well, you know, we have learned a lot about India as it is now and the opportunities which are emerging. So this is going to be work in progress. Uh, Professor, I'll come back on the FTA aspect. The fact that uh, uh, the German Chancellor did uh, exude some optimism and said that uh, he would expect the deal to, uh, to you know, conclude in months and not years. But... Uh, what is it or what are some of the obstacles, if, if you put it like that, if, if I would like to understand from you, which have been holding the FTA uh, to reach a conclusion? We've seen how in 2022 the talks resumed after nearly 10 years, but it's yet to see any kind of conclusion. I think uh, there are still uh, intra-Europe differences which continue to hamper a cohesive approach on this. Uh, and uh, for a long time, as you know very well, we have been discussing this FTA now for decades. Uh, and uh, then, then the talks resumed in 2022, as you mentioned. There, this, the sense was that perhaps time has come to relook at our economic engagement because both India was messaging that it is, it is now, uh, India has been signing some of these uh, agreements to uh, some countries. And I think this element of uh, uh, you know, trust-based economic partnerships was gaining momentum. So there was, there has been an opportunity in the last few years to relook at the very political and strategic rationale behind the FTA, and I think therefore, uh, if, if there, if, you know, if there was ever a moment of optimism, it is now that perhaps, given the changing strategic landscape, there is a there is greater opportunity to converge on on this FTA. Now, as Ambassador Singh was pointing out, we have always had a problem that uh, you know countries like Germany have not been pulling their weight when it comes to the negotiations, and there. You, you know, the dissonance within the European Union and the lack of a strategic uh, mapping of why this FT was important, that was uh, certainly, uh, you know, has been, uh, has not been made. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, you know, there has been bureaucratic uh, resistance, there has been uh, uh, resistance from certain uh, interest groups. Now, however, that, that aspect is changing and as, and I think the reason why Chancellor shows seems optimistic or uh, struck out an optimistic tone is precisely because of that reason that he feels that, uh, or given how Germany is reorienting itself, uh, there is a wider case to be made about India. That case is being made repeatedly by, by I think, the German government. Uh, again, uh, I think Ambassador Singh is right that we do have a dissonance between the private sector and the state in Germany. Uh, and, and private sector is extremely uh, cagey about moving away from China. You do see that resistance. Uh, you know that uh, given the dependence on China, but one thing which is quite extraordinary about about Germany, which we saw, for example, in the in the context of the Ukraine uh, war, that it took them months to shift from their dependence, energy dependence on Russia uh, away. And I think that is quite you know if if that is the template, then there are there is a, there is a you know, one can be optimistic about the China shift as well, because if need be, uh, I think you can certainly see uh, the government and the and the uh, private sector working together. Right. But I do think that the FTA discussion is still a long way. 
Okay, okay, Ambassador, very quickly, I'll take one last comment from you. The fact that India-Germany partnership uh, is entering its 25th year, that's something that the Prime Minister mentioned as well. 50 years, both sides are celebrate, celebrating of our science and technology partnership. But how do you see now the relations progressing further? And there is optimistic intent from both sides. The amount of agreements and announcements today is amazing. And if you look at what we are already doing, the hydrogen partnership, the Indo-German Center for Science and Technology, which we don't have in any other country. You know, they do amazing things. When I go to IIT Indore, every day at breakfast, I meet different Germans researching something or the other. So, you know, at the ground swell, there is a lot happening. And since Germany is a civil society kind of country, I think people to people, academia to academia, business to business, these are all very important. The strategic direction is well given by the Chancellery of Germany. And I think we should be extremely satisfied that the new direction in which India and Germany are going has in it the space for a lot of public good ahead. Certainly. So this partnership between India and Germany has grown significantly over the past 25 years. We've been enjoying the strategic partnership. But there are several new areas, new frontiers that both sides are keen on exploring. And we'll see them uh, also building momentum and adding value, elevating our relationship to the next level. Thank you to both our guests for joining us on this edition of Perspective, sharing your thoughts with us and our viewers. To you viewers, thank you very much for your time as well. संसद टीवी के और भी प्रोग्राम्स देखने के लिए सब्सक्राइब करें हमारा यूट्यूब चैनल और हाँ इन्हें लाइक और शेयर करना ना भूलें